Hello again folks. Uh, today I'm going to try and explain how my return loop works. Somebody did ask me and uh, I thought well that's probably best just done in a video to be honest. It's not as easy as it might seem. Um, this is a DC layout so for DCC it's a whole other matter. Don't ask me, I haven't a clue. Um, so I am going to explain how the return loop works on this particular layout um, and maybe that will help you if you're thinking of putting in a return loop in your DC layout. Before I actually explain how this actually works, I'm just going to demonstrate it just so you get the idea in case you're not that sure what a return loop actually does. Um, so this train is going clockwise around the layout. I'm just going to reverse it back up. And I'm going to send it round the return loop. So I've got to switch a couple of points, switch some isolators, change the direction, and I've got those down there. So when that hits the main line again, the train is now facing the opposite way. And then the track anti clockwise. And obviously, I can send it back down in reverse and turn it around again. So it's a jolly useful thing to have in your uh, in your layout. I must admit, it adds a lot of interest to be able to turn your trains around like that. So how does it work? Um, there's absolutely no way I'm going to try and explain this to you. <laughs> by pointing at all the points and the wiring and everything here, just a bit too complicated. So uh, brace yourselves folks, slideshow coming up. Okay, so this is a return loop in its sort of most basic form. Um, you know, the, the, the line comes round and goes back on itself and causes a short circuit. So obviously it doesn't work, it just electronically it does not work. So what you need to do is you need to isolate part of the track to prevent that. So if I isolate the track there, it prevents that short circuit. But for the loop to function correctly in both directions, you really need to isolate it in two places. So here we have got it isolated there, and there's another isolator here, but that's switched on at the moment to allow the current through. So with the points set to go straight on, your train can come in and stop anywhere up to the isolated section. This whole section here is just a perfectly normal circuit. And then you'd stop the train, change the points and swap your isolators over, like so. And that allows the train to then continue because now all that section is live. So basically the points and the isolators allow you to have two different sections of track live at any one time. So that in principle, in its most basic form, that's how a return loop works. Um, so you might have that on a, an end-to-end -end layout, that's, you could have one or at the end of a siding or whatever if you've got the room. Um, but I think most people probably have it in an oval like this and that changes it slightly uh, you don't need to isolate this section here um, you've got an extra set of points you've got an extra bit of track coming round in itself but it's still fairly simple and you can still do it with just two isolated sections but rather than them um, one being on and one being off you work them in tandem so when you set your points to allow the train to go through, you have to isolate both there and there, like so. So if you think about it, that's allowing a live section of track in an S shape, like so, to allow the train to turn around and go in the other direction without causing a short circuit, because it would do there and there. So 
that's how you would do it in a straight oval with a single power input. So, train going round and round, stop the train, open up your return loop, isolate your rails, put your train through and switch it back and your train can then carry on in the other direction. And essentially that's what I've got in my layout is a return loop in a, a straight oval of track. However, this is where I came a bit unstuck, is I've wired my layout with a bus. Um, so I've actually got four input points on my, uh, on my oval. Uh, and that renders these isolated sections completely useless because what it's doing, if you think about it, it's bypassing it. So you isolate it, but the power is still being fed to either side of the isolated section. So it doesn't work. Um, I, this had me scratching my head for a bit, it really did, until I realised, well hang on, all you have to do is switch the bus on and off. So it's like putting isolators into the positive and negative parts of the bus. So it requires four switches in total to work in parallel with each other. So you set your points and you isolate your two tracks and you isolate the positive and negative parts of the bus. That then cuts power going in there and there and prevents any short circuit feeding through from the other side. So you end up with that power in that S-shape section which allows the return loop to work. And as you saw when I demonstrated it, it works fine. That's exactly what I have in my layout. So there you go. That's that's how the return loop works in a DC layout. Uh, there may be other ways to do it that I'm not aware of. I'm aware there are gadgets you can get for automating it. Um, and obviously in a DCC layout, it's completely different. Uh, well, I think anyway, I have no idea about DCC. It's all mystery to me that maybe one day I will explore, but uh, yeah, that's how I do my return loop. Um, if there's a better way to do it, I'm all ears. Um, but that's how I do mine. Um, maybe that's been a little bit of help to you if you haven't been too clear on how a return loop works. You know, you're maybe just starting out, you're building a layout and you like the idea of having one, but um, yeah, it's, it's not that clear and I've never seen a really good explanation um, of, of, of how to do what I've just shown. So hopefully that's of help to somebody out there. Okay folks, catch you later.